Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Adam here, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about how you are probably using the wrong tool or the wrong screwdriver on your electrical projects. So I'm gonna go through all the different options, what they're good for, what they're not good for, the pros and cons of all of them, and then also introduce you to some of the tools that maybe you haven't seen that might be able to help you a little bit better on your future projects. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's go. All right, so let's just go ahead and cut to the chase and the screwdriver that most people are using that really probably should not be is this just standard Phillips head screwdriver. Now this is one of my favorite screwdrivers. This is an old Craftsman screwdriver that I've used on many, many projects and the installations were successful, but this is definitely not the most efficient tool to use when tightening down those terminal screws. And I'll show you why that is now. So I've got a standard electrical outlet here. And of course, probably the main reason why everybody's using Phillips head is because when you look at these terminal screws, the heads of them, they look like your standard Phillips head screw. So of course, you think that this is gonna be the best one to use because you've got four points of contact all the way around. It seems to fit in there perfectly well and it spins just the way you would think that it should. But as I'm tightening this down and I start to get to where it's providing resistance, in this case, I don't have a wire there, but if there was a wire there, you know it starts to stop being able to spin. When I go to spin it, the screwdriver just wants to pop out of that terminal. So what do you do? You push down really hard and you try to turn it some more, and maybe you might be successful in turning it a little bit more, but more than likely, it's just going to pop out. So what can come of this, especially for people that don't know any better, is when they get to that place of where it's starting to give that resistance, instead of really tightening down, trying to tighten that screw head down on the wire as tight as possible, they'll just leave it the way that it is and you may have a loose connection, which of course can cause problems in the future. If you take a regular screw like this, you can see that the cutouts in the top of the screw head are a lot tighter. So when the screwdriver goes in, there's no moving around. It's in there nice and tight. It's grabbing all of the corners of the top of that screw head and so it's just not the same as the terminal screws that are on these outlets and switches. So overall, the Phillips head screwdriver, while it can work, is just not the ideal tool in order to tighten down all of the connections to where you know that you're gonna have a nice tight fit for a long period of time. So let's go ahead and move into the next screwdriver option and that is this flat head here. Now, when I was talking to my electrician friends about what they use, a lot of them are using these flat-headed screwdrivers in their installations and repairs. And the reason that I got for that is because it has this flat head and it's so wide. If we take our outlet here again, you see you've got that one slat that goes all the way across the top of the terminal screw. That just goes in there. You're able to put more torque on it than you would be able to with a Phillips head screwdriver. So while this can definitely be a good option because it can provide a lot of torque on these terminal screws, one of the issues with it is when you go to use one and say you only have one hand to do so, it takes more time to acquire where to put it because it constantly wants to slide in there. And then even when you're tightening it down, what's it constantly want to do? It constantly wants to slide out. So ideally, in order to use the flat head, you have to use two hands. And to expand on that issue a little bit more, I'm sure many of you can relate to this because this is the case so many times where you're holding your receptacle or light switch in your hand, whatever it is that you're trying to install, you're holding it down tight, you take a flat headed screwdriver and you get to where you really need to tighten it down where you're really putting a lot of force on it, but what happens? That flat head screwdriver slips out and it stabs your hand and I've had it to where it's actually cut my hand a little bit. So overall, the flat headed screwdriver can definitely be used. It's used by professionals in many instances. The pros again are the added torque that you can get from being able to put it across that whole length of the terminal screw head. But the cons of course are it's not the greatest to use if you can only use one hand. 
So with that being said, if you're finding this video be helpful or interesting, if you could do me a really big favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. It really does help the video out to spread out to more people and hopefully be able to help them out as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. So now let's get into the screwdriver that I've been using the most and have found a lot of success with. And the screwdriver itself is a Klein screwdriver. I really like Klein, they're heavy duty. It's got a big grip on it, so you're able to put that extra torque on it. But then when we get to the bit, this particular screwdriver comes with 11 different bits. So it's got your flat head, it's got your Phillips, it's got star bits or Torx bits. But the bit that I like to use the most on it and have been using for a while with great success is this Robertson bit, or some people will call it a square bit. Now the reason that I like using this bit so much and I found that a lot of electricians recommend using it as well is when you take an outlet, for instance, it's made almost perfectly that when you stick it into the terminal head, there's almost no movement to it. It's in there pretty snug so that when you go to tighten it down, you get to where it's giving resistance, you can continue turning it and really tightening and torquing down that terminal head to make a really good connection. Any time that I've used this, I have never had any doubts that I'm gonna have any issues with this terminal screw backing out at all, causing for a loose connection or anything like that. So it's got different sizes depending on what exactly is being installed. The other nice thing about this Robertson bit is it works also on these top screws that then screw into the box really well. So you have no issues with making sure that you're able to tighten your outlet all the way down into the box nice and firm. And while I have almost zero complaints with this Robertson bit, I have found on certain receptacles and switches that the terminal screws aren't always completely the same. When you're really going to tighten down on it, because it doesn't have a ton of contact points, or I should say they're not spread out very far and they're all just in that one small space, even though this is nice and tight, because of manufacturing of some of these terminal screws, they're not always built the best. When you go to really tighten down on it, I found on certain receptacles and light switches, it can actually start to wallow out the very middle part of the head. But overall, I've really not had a ton of issues with that. And even once it does get to that point, the screw is already tightened down really tight. So all of this brings me to my final option. And in my opinion, the best option, if I just take this bit out and I flip it over, and that brings me to this bit right here. This particular bit is made by Klein and it's more of a hybrid bit. They call it a combination bit. And the reason they call it that is because if you look right here in the middle, it's still got that square shape or like a Robertson bit would have. But it also has four sides like a Phillips head screwdriver would have. And it's got that one longer side that mimics more of a flat headed screwdriver. So I found this to be the best of both worlds because it fits snug into that terminal screw, but then it also provides a ton of torque. So you can really make sure to tighten down those terminal screws as tight as they can possibly go. So if I take my receptacle here and I take my hybrid bit, I just go to put it into the slots and there is almost zero movement of that screwdriver inside of the top of that terminal screw. So it's in there nice and tight. And then when I go to really tighten this down, I've already got it tightened down, I can continue turning it for quite a bit before it doesn't pop out, it doesn't slide out. I just have to stop because I can't spin it anymore. And likewise, up on these top screws, it fits in there very well. So I'm also able to tighten these down really nice and tight into the box. And I'm also able to just use one hand without having to worry about it slipping out. Now, like I said earlier, this particular bit is made by Klein. This is their combination bit. But I've seen quite a few other people that are swearing by another bit that's a lot like this one. And that's this one here. This one is made by Milwaukee. This is their ECX bit. And so I actually just went out and picked one of these up the other day just so I could compare the two to see if there were any differences. And there were some definite differences between the Milwaukee and the ECX bit and then the Klein with their combination bit. But for the most part, they operated about the same. I'll just show you the biggest difference that I found between the ECX and then the Klein. 
So the biggest difference that I found between these two particular bits is that when I go to put it into the terminal screw, when I go to wiggle it to see how much play there is between the end of the bit and the inside of the terminal screw, you can see I've got a little bit of play there. If I take the combination bit of the Klein and I put it in there, there's almost no play there whatsoever. There's definitely a noticeable difference as far as how tight these fit into the terminal screws. And the only real difference I can find between the two is if I look at the very top or the point of this Klein combination bit, it's not a perfect square. They've made it to where it's almost a hybrid between a square Robertson bit and a Phillips head screwdriver. So you've got a little bit of a flange on the square portion that fits really well into this part of the terminal screw. Whereas then with this Milwaukee ECX bit, it's more of just a true Robertson or square bit in the middle. And then like the other one, it has this part that's like a flat headed screwdriver to then help give that extra torque. But as far as performance goes, I would say that it's pretty negligible as far as which one is better or worse than the other one. They both do an awesome job of really tightening down those terminal screws, torquing them down as much as possible to make sure you have a good connection with your wires. And like the Klein, the Milwaukee is a multi-bit, so that's nice so that you have everything at your disposal. And you don't have to buy the whole screwdriver. If you have one of these screwdrivers or one like it, you can just buy the bits and for the most part, it's plug and play. I can take the Klein combination bit out of the Klein screwdriver and then take the Milwaukee ECX and it'll fit right into the Klein, no issue. Same thing with the Milwaukee, I can take the Klein combination bit and it'll fit right into the Milwaukee screwdriver as well. So that's nice also. But all that being said, I can get behind both of these. They both work really, really well. And I'll have links down in the description down below where you can check both of these out and also anything else that you saw in the video. So was I correct at the beginning of the video when I said the vast majority of you were probably using the wrong screwdriver? If I was, please let me know down in the comment section down below what you were using. And now after watching this video, are you gonna make a change? And if so, what are you going to make a change to? I really appreciate all the feedback because just like you, I'm always learning as well. And there's some of you out there that have a lot of experience. So I really appreciate it. Also, if you like electrical type projects or projects around the house, I've done quite a few of them in the past. I'll put some links right over here that you can click on or you can go to the main channel and you can find them there as well. I hope this video was helpful for you and helped you to decide to either make a change to something else or just show you some different products that are out there that can be very useful. If it was helpful, please do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section as well. And I'll see y'all in the next one. See ya.